Well, hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally the things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. And on this pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things, we're getting out of the Stuff and Things studios. It's a beautiful day. I figured I'd go to a park, go someplace that is actually outdoors in the fresh air. I've been cooped up all weekend long so far doing some, some work for the channel, some other stuff that I needed to be in front of the computer for. So let's get out and about. I don't know exactly where we're gonna go. Um, I can't really put this camera down while I'm driving either. Let's see how this works. It's hard to drive a stick shift with one hand, but we'll make it work. I will probably, for the sake of safety, put the camera down at some point. So I've got a couple parks in mind. We may go to one right by the water. Well, actually, they're both right by the water. But either the marina, which is very pretty with all sorts of boats about, or we may go to, I think, a park we've been to several times in the history of stuff and things. Um, this is kind of like a cool rocky shoreline. Whichever one is not extremely occupied, we shall see. Well, I just passed the marina, so it looks like we're going to the other park. Ah, another reason that I decided to take the camera out and about today is because last week I did the little test using the new C-Log3 profile that you can use on the Canon R6. It just had the, I guess, 1.4 firmware update on the camera, which allowed you to use C-Log3, a way of recording that supposedly preserves a lot more of the dynamic range. Boats, there are boats out there. Um, and you can get a better picture. I tried that within the confines of Stuff and Things Studio last week, and it worked out pretty well. I've got some feedback from some of you we'll go into when we get into the proper part of the show, I guess. But I also wanted to try it when I'm outside because I don't have control over the lighting when I'm outdoors. Obviously, there are certain settings you can use. I could try, <clears throat> I guess right now I have auto ISO on, and I also have auto white balance. So ugh, as the lighting situations change, like right now I'm in a car that's in shade, but there's a lot of sunlight outside of the car. I wanna see if it's possible to use C-Log, that picture profile when I'm not in a controlled situation like in the studio. So I'm still learning. I'm trying new things, seeing how all this works out. So hopefully, uh, we'll turn here. And uh, yeah, hopefully this all work out. Sorry, I'm trying to talk and drive at the same time, which is probably not safe. So let me put the camera down. We also have to contend with the fact that I need an ND filter on the camera right now. And that's gonna change the setting I need to put the ND filter on. It's a variable ND filter as we move about, like that's a little too dark for this probably. And that might be a little too li a little too little, so we'll see. Um, here we are. We're at the park. It looks very scorched and brown because it has not rained here in quite some time. But we'll see. We'll take a look around the shore, see where there aren't a ton of people running around, and uh, see if we can do the show. go down onto the sand and walk along the shoreline, but then I realize I'm wearing boat shoes. Probably not the best for that kind of terrain, so I think we're going to try the rocks over here. but I should actually say giant gnarly blocks of concrete that have been dumped on this beach over the years as a breakwater or as a tide break or whatever the hell you call that. Um, 
probably, again, not the best place for me to be walking around with an extremely expensive camera that I do not want to drop and break. Again, wearing boat shoes that do not have a whole lot of traction. Anyway, I'm just gonna try to find a place that seems somewhat stable where I can stand and or sit and enjoy. There was a friendly little old woman as I was walking over here. She's like, oh, nice camera. I said, oh yeah, trying it out. And uh, she asked me if I'd ever taken any interesting videos. And <laughs> the way she said it made me wonder what she meant by interesting. A lot of interesting old people I've seen today. Um, well, this one was kind of sad. I was at the grocery store and an old man had collapsed in the middle of the store and there were all these people, paramedics and everything around him. Hopefully he was okay. Helicopter. And then later on, oh man, how am I gonna get down to there? <laughs> later on, there was a yard sale near our house and uh, I was walking by there and saw this old couple crossing the street. Oh, Lord above. Hold on. Heading towards the garage sale, or the yard sale. And the old man was wearing, he was ancient and just like tiny, but he was wearing these overalls, kind of oversized, but like, very much I'm a farmer man overalls. And then he had on like the classic, I guess you'd call it like a conductor's hat sort of, but it's something that I've seen old farm and men wear. Had a big white bushy beard, even had a piece of hay in his mouth. It was kind of remarkable. I was like, where did you come from? Did some portal open up from like 1932 and deposit you here in the street? Anyway, he seemed excited about the yard sale. But here we are. This is, you know, not the most beautiful beach in the world, but it is a beach and uh, I kind of like it. Kind of nervous about setting this tripod up. It's the ah, SwitchPod Pro. And I'm setting it up on a slightly uneven rock, and I do not want it to fall. Obviously. So, anyway, I've also got a ball head on top of it to make it so I can sort of point it at me. I think the camera's gonna stay there. I'm actually kind of sweating because it's actually kind of hot out here, close to 80 degrees, I think. Um, and I may be really silhouetted badly in the sun. Uh, I don't know. That might be better. Hopefully the ND filter's working again. This is kind of a test. It's also a Sunday stuff and things, obviously, but it's also an equipment test because I want to be able to use this stuff when I go out vlogging, when I'm running and gunning on the road, um, just whether or not I can use the sea log thing. So. This is a Sunday stuff and thing, so we are going to get to some of the normal Sunday stuff and thing things, including. Uh, we will talk about some upcoming videos, things that you can look forward to. We will talk a little bit about your responses to last week's video when I was asking you what you thought of the video quality. We, of course, have your questions and hashtag ask stuff and things, and some pretty good ones this week as well. So, let's get into it. All right, what can you look forward to on the channels? Well, if you forgot, if you didn't check it out, we already posted the final review for GLP's Spark Plug, a blend that a lot of people were looking forward to me trying out. We did the first impressions, then did the final review. In the first impressions, I was thinking I might like it even more than Gaslight, one of my favorite GLP's blends. My opinion may have changed slightly by the final review, but you should check that out. It posted last Wednesday. But coming up this Wednesday, we are going to have, uh, I guess, the three-month the three month check-in? It's part four, technically, but the three-month check-in for the nine-month guitar challenge video. I'm doing that a little bit earlier, 
I guess because by the time, if I recorded it next weekend and did it the following Wednesday, it would have been after the first. So this is a little bit before the first, August 1st, but we're gonna put that in there. Um, something major happened, something kind of seismic that altered pretty much the entire way I play guitar again. This is the second time this has happened throughout this challenge. And I guess maybe I should be expecting these kinds of things from now on because the more I play and the more I try to do things, the more I realize that maybe I need to change the way I do things in order to get the results that I want. So this was a big one. Um, so it's pretty interesting. Check that out. That's going to be posting Wednesday. And then also, of course, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we have our Valheim videos with our good friend, Kevin, the, the Kevinson, not Kevin, the Kevinson, just Kevin Kevinson. Um, I'm loving that game. I'm horribly frustrated by that game, but I'm loving that game. And so many of you are enjoying watching it as well. And stay tuned with Stuff and Things Plays because we're going to be having some interesting news there coming up. I guess I shouldn't even hint at that because it'll probably be several months until it happens. But uh, I don't know. Some of you who are looking forward to a certain thing may be happy sometime in the future. All right, and so I asked for your response last week, just telling me whether or not you thought the video quality was better when I was using C-Log and doing a color correction um, with Adobe Premiere. And most of you did seem to say, <clears throat> did seem to think that it looked better. What I was going for was really a more true to life, natural look as just kind of a baseline. And then I may go from there and tweak things and alter things a little bit. Some of you said that maybe the colors looked a little more muted or that it seemed kind of muddy in the background. That's kind of the point in the background. Like I don't want the background to pop. I want the background, I want me to pop away from the background, but I want things to look really natural as just a baseline. And then from there, I may actually do color grading. So that was just kind of an experiment in color correction, but it was great to get a lot of your feedback. Some of you, or many of you did seem to think that it looked a lot better and some of you thought maybe it didn't look as dynamic as before. And that's actually probably a good thing. I'm not saying that that's how I want it to stay, but just for me getting that baseline of just kind of natural looking, normal colors. And then from there I can build. So thank you all for your feedback. All right, we're just gonna jump right into questions and hashtag ask stuff and things. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like me to answer it on the Sunday Stuff and Things, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag ask stuff and things, and I will do my best to answer you. Just like Jason did, actually Jason did via Patreon. If you are a Patreon supporter, you can write me there. And if you do not use Twitter and you watch me on YouTube, you can leave a YouTube comment and I will try to answer your questions if you leave me a question there as well. But via Patreon, Jason21602 asked, Hello Bradley, greetings from Albuquerque. With your high temperatures of late, do you find English blends not doing so well in the heat? White Knight is one of my favorite blends, but it's unsmokable here in summer, 95 to 100 degrees. It's super sharp and acrid tasting. Perhaps Spark Plug would have tasted even better in the winter? Thanks for all the great content, Jason. We sort of delved into this, I don't know if it was last week or the week before when someone asked me what my favorite hot temperature blend was. And I did mention that when it is hot, when it is, uh, I'd say anywhere from like late spring into early fall, I do prefer vapors and English, or not English blends, vapors and straight Virginias. I can, I can still enjoy an English blend, but definitely if I'm outside and it's hot, especially, I don't even know why exactly, but a nice citrusy Virginia blend just hits the spot. And the English does just seem a little heavy, a little stifling. And maybe I would have liked Spark Plug a little bit more. I mean, I already liked it a lot, but maybe if it were cold, wintry evening, I would have enjoyed it a bit more. Uh, Albuquerque, that's hot. We were getting up to those temperatures when we had the crazy heat wave, go heat wave going on, but luckily things have been back to normal. It's just been in the 70s in Bellingham, Washington, which is how I prefer it. Next, from Turf Smurf via Twitter, at BS Smurf 1974, uh, Turf Smurf says, Hi Bradley. Last week you had a question from someone wanting an aromatic that has the same taste all down the bowl. The only two I can think of are Sam Gawith 1792 and Grasmere. So, oh, there's a crow sneaking up behind me. 1792 has a real pungent taste of Tonquin all the way down and it is pretty good. The Grasmere has rose flavor and is bloody awful. Also, you mentioned smoking after a meal. I have never after a meal, or, or, nor do I ever have a morning pipe. Is that unusual? I don't start until about seven or eight. 
Um, okay, so I have had Samyogawa 1792, and even though I guess technically that's an aromatic because it is, well, is it? Yeah. It's flavored with Tonquin bean. I don't know if that's necessarily what the question, what the questioner had in mind because it's a very odd flavor. It's not your typical cherry, vanilla, what have you. Um, but that is a good shout, like Samuel Gawith. I haven't had Grasmere actually, but yeah, you will definitely taste the Tonquin all the way through that bowl if that's your thing. Uh, so thank you, Turf Smurf. Next from Michael Jones at Mike J2735. Hey Bradley, hope you're doing well. Did you know that there is a sequel to Subnautica, Subnautica Below Zero? And do you think you will play it and feature it on your channel? Um, I have heard that there is a, I, well, I had heard that they were working on a sequel. I had heard that it was, well, it was supposedly just kind of an expansion, but then it turned into kind of a mini sequel. And I had heard that it was an early access. I guess I maybe heard that it had finally been released. Actually, I hadn't checked on that in a while, but maybe it is actually officially out now. And yeah, I probably will play that on the channel at some point, because I had a lot of fun playing the original Subnautica. Next, via YouTube, Barry Allison asks, asks, I have watched several of the GLP's reviews of your videos. Can you tell the viewers of your channel the pipe teas you actually like, as it would be very helpful and time-saving based on the amount of time it takes to watch all of your videos? Thank you. I don't know what you mean exactly. Are you just asking me what my favorite blends are? Because, you know, Elizabethan is always going to be there as probably my favorite vapor. Um, I really love Standard Mixture, Peterson Standard Mixture, as just a basic English. I like Ashton Artisan's blend. Um, I love, for a Burley blend, Solani Age Burley Flake is great. I love Samuel Gawith Full Virginia Flake. I like Gawith, uh, b -b -b what did I just have from Gawith? I like uh, Squadron Leader. There are a lot of blends I like, but I don't exactly know what you mean about it saving you time. Maybe you just want a litany of every blend I do or do not like. I'm not exactly sure, but hopefully I answered your question. Next from Ortsi Lander Londa Rubio. Um, Oh, this is feedback for the last Sunday stuff and things. The video looks perfect, very professional, color, white balance, exposure. I am a Canon user myself, Canon 6D, but for photography only. Short question for the show, uh, and thanks for the feedback. What kind of photography are you enjoying the most at the moment? Wildlife, landscape, street, thanks. I am mostly working on, well, working on is, I guess, being kind of generous to myself. I am dabbling mostly in wildlife. Um, Ever since I got that 600 millimeter lens, I have really been trying to get some good pictures with that. And I think I have succeeded, at least judging on a curve for me, I have succeeded. So we will show some of those soon. I do want to do a video about that lens and about the pictures I've been able to get with it. Um, I do a little bit of portrait stuff as well. And I have been working, I'm trying to figure out what street photography is all about because I do take it with me sometimes I'll go downtown and I'll say okay what's an interesting scene that I can capture here and I just don't know that I have really gotten anything that I like doing that yet and maybe it has to be more about the people on the street because I'm not really doing too much of that um, maybe I just need to be brazen and start asking people if I can take their pictures or just not even asking and just taking their pictures I'll probably ask um, but yeah, I just haven't, I haven't piqued my own interest when doing street photography, but I'd like to do that as well. We shall see. I did get a, my fiance actually got me for Christmas, the little 50 millimeter 1.8 lens that I think would be great for street photography. So I do want to take that out more and try. But gang, I think that's it for questions. Um, I think that might be it for this Sunday stuff and things. I know it's kind of a weird format, um, but I really wanted to get out of the studio Actually, I didn't really want to go to the studio is the thing, and uh, I wanted to get out of the house, and so this was a great opportunity, and also an opportunity to test the ND filter, test the C-Log settings and everything for this camera to see if I can color correct when I'm out and about, things are changing um, as far as color temperature and the white balance and the ISO and all that stuff. So thank you for indulging me and letting me do this. But before we go, every week, I like to thank the amazing people who support the channels on Patreon. If you would like to support the channels on Patreon, there is a link in the description box below. 
it is greatly appreciated because it helps pay for this camera that I'm filming this video with, a lot of the products that we sample for review, the lights we use in the studio, it helps pay for my subscription to the Adobe Creative Suite. Um, so it's really, really appreciated and we can't thank you enough. But for those of you who support the channels at $25 or more a month, you get a special shout out. And I would like to thank people like Kirk Crompton, Private Eye, Glenn, Jason Buckner, Jen Oside, John Leone, Christian Kovacs, Gloria Phillips, Ryan McFadden, Matt Marino, and Joe Heafy. And now, of course, the crazy people, the maniacs who support the channels at $100 a month. People like Peter Straub, Bob McGee, David Gaudreau, and Ashes of the Phoenix. Thank you all so much for your support. Thank you all so much for watching, for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for subscribing. It is much appreciated and it does help us with the old YouTube algorithm. So if you wanna give a little thumbs up, give a little share, give a little like, which is the same as a thumbs up, leave a comment, all that good stuff. It does help us out a lot. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley, you've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. I'll see you later. Crabbies. Are there any crabbies? <gasps> hey, hey guys. Oh, hold on. You seem very angry. Grab me. <laughs> Are you gonna go? Are you gonna go for it? Come on. Oh, come on, buddy. Come in. What's the matter? You scared? I can still tell you're there. <laughs>